Hello and welcome again to this edition of Florida Internet and Television's Fi TV. I'm your host, Brad Swanson. We are coming to you once again just a few blocks from Florida's capital. Today we are joined by Representative Sean Shaw, candidate for Attorney General. Representative Shaw, welcome. Good morning, Brad. How's it going? All right. Well, we, we're, we're doing great. Thanks for coming on sure. the program. So we're here to talk to you about you deciding to run statewide right. in the Attorney General's election. Okay. Right. So why are you running? Let's start with the basics. Brad, I think this is the greatest job in Florida. And I'm including the governor, the U.S. Senate, all the jobs in Florida. This is the job where you get to protect Floridians, right? So. Uh, it's also the job where I don't have to ask permission to protect Floridians. You know, as a member of the House, I'm one of 120 people. Mm -hmm. I've got to run things through the committee process and go to the Senate and then hope the governor dies. I don't have to do all of that. If someone is harming uh, Floridians, I get to the, the next day go after them, whether that's the opioid crisis, whether that is uh, being lead on these criminal justice reforms, whether Fraudsters, that is right? all of these yeah. fraudsters, any of that stuff, I get to protect them the next day I get to do it. That's the, that is why I believe this is the office that's the best and it's most suited to kind of my talents and my background. Right, well, so, so you're gonna be a general. Do you plan on coming into work in some sort of uniform or? or <laughs> no, no? no okay. this all is right. the uniform. Right. This right. is that's the, the uniform. uniform, that's the uniform, right. okay. All right, so, so as a candidate, what are the top priorities that you're communicating to the voters of Florida? <clears throat> Well, number one, I believe, is the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to address that in a meaningful way. Uh, number two, quite frankly, is what we're going through now a little bit. This gun stuff we have going on. You know, one of the things that happened after the Parkland shooting, it crystallized in my mind why I was doing this. Um, because the legislature, we, it's been a week, two weeks. We've done nothing. There's, we've done a whole bunch of talking. Mm -hmm. No bill has been passed in either chamber. We're doing a lot of talk. That speaks to the ineffectiveness, I think, of the legislative process. I want to be able to do something, mm -hmm. right? I don't want politics to get in the way. I want to be able to do something. If I want to sue gun manufacturers whose entire business model is predicated on making their guns easy to accessorize after the fact to make them automatic, like I can sue them the next day. I don't have to go th and go through all this committee process and agonize and have session on Saturday like the Senate just did. I get to just do it. Yeah. And that's the greatest thing about this job. And, you know, leading on these criminal justice reforms, we know we need someone to take point, obviously. Mm -hmm. Republicans and Democrats have both been talking about the need to address mandatory minimums, the need to address direct filing of juveniles, all these things we agree on, none of it's been done. Well, well, some people will say that's kind of in the weeds, but but tell us, how, how does that reform, let's take the juvenile issue, how right. does that change change somebody's life in the long run? I mean, I mean, the, the whole conversation was you go into the system, you never get out, and it's recidivism. Talk to us about, about know, that reform. So all of us, the school to prison pipeline is real, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the, when you have an interaction with the criminal justice system as a juvenile, mm -hmm. all the stats say you're gonna to continue to have interactions with the system as a juvenile as an, and as an adult. Right. So that first interaction is key. And all of these interactions, particularly the first, don't need to be felonies where you go into uh, jail. Uh, if you have a drug possession, go to drug court. Go to some kind of diversionary program. Right. You know, I filed a bill that wasn't specific to those things, but it allowed a judge to be involved in the process when a juvenile was being charged as an adult. Yeah. Right now the prosecutor does it. Why not have a judge come and kind of evaluate whether that's been doing right, whether he, ought to, he or she ought to be charged as a juvenile or an adult. Because yeah. once that juvenile is charged as an adult <clears throat> and interacts with the criminal justice system, uh, their life is going to be really continued interactions with the criminal justice system. All right, so, so day one, Representative Shaw becomes the Attorney General. It's a humongous organization, it's statewide. When you walk into the doors, what's your top one or two either priorities or things that you're going you're gonna to communicate to the team on the ground, okay, here's what this is going to look like day one. Right, that's a great question. So I'm going to call the top people in that office around a conference table, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell them every day I'm going to come into this office in the morning, and I'm going to ask you all, who are we going after today to protect Floridians? And if you don't have an answer, you don't belong in this room. Okay. That's the kind of attorney general's office we're going to run. It's going to be active. We're going to be doing things every day. There's going to be a humongous activity from that office. That's, that's one of the things I would, uh, I would say that we haven't seen from that office, enough activity. Uh, and, and number two, you know, I think the opioid crisis is akin to the tobacco. Okay, well, let's, uh, when let's, we let's went dive after into the, that. So, yeah. so, so that's, that, that is affecting, I think it's something like 
600 people a day, you know, are, die from that. I, that number might be high, but but I mean, it is dramatic for Florida, mm -hmm. you know. So so no, that's obviously not in Florida. That's a national number. But but let's look at opioids. I mean, it is it is draining our system. I mean, how, how do you tackle such a big problem that that requires so many different organizations, even outside of the attorney general's office? Go after the pharmaceutical companies directly. Okay. I mean, go after the companies that are that are making these drugs so prevalent on the streets, mm -hmm. go after them just like we went after tobacco, mm -hmm. uh, and go after them in a major way and hit them where it hurts, mm -hmm. uh, in their pocketbooks. You know, other attorney generals around the country have done this, other attorney generals have banded together to do this. Uh, that is where the rubber meets the road, attack the pharmaceutical companies, and that is a day one issue. Uh, you know, some other things, quite frankly, <clears throat> I come from the legislature, but I've been there long enough to know I don't think we're doing what the people sent us there to do. So if the people sent, if the people vote for Amendment 1, which would require us to put a certain amount of money into the environment and we don't do it. Right. If the people send us here to pass uh, a medicinal cannabis rules, we haven't done it. Uh, the legislature, quite frankly, needs to be sued about that. Yeah. When constitutional amendments are passed in this state, they pass by a 60% majority, and I bet you those 60% plus people that voted for those amendments right. would not be happy to know the legislature has failed to implement one or more of them. That's the job of the Attorney General. I've got to make sure that that's being done. Okay, so the Attorney General sits on the cabinet. This is another big play, right? So you are one of four key folks that decide on much broader policy mm -hmm than just what sits in the AG's um, uh, call to action, if you will. H how do you see your role on that cabinet? Well, this, I mean, I'm, I'm going to continue to be a consumer advocate. I'm going to continue to be someone that looks out for the people. But, you know, when I, I worked for Alex Sink uh, from 2008 to 2010 when she was a member of the cabinet, and, you know, you sit on the cabinet as when it sits as the Florida Services Commission, Financial Services Commission. You pick the uh, Office of Insurance regulation commissioner. You pick the OFR commissioner, the financial regulation commissioner. Those are big time jobs. The insurance right. commissioner in right. Florida is one of the biggest jobs we have. Uh, you also sit and you determine these land deals. When Sugar wants to purchase land and comes to the cabinet uh, for approval, you also sit and determine people the, res the restoration of rights. I know we're going to have a, a constitutional amendment on the ballot, but these are big time issues. Uh, and that is in addition to what you do as attorney general. So you, that's, a, that's a big time point. You've got to be a steward of the environment. You've got to be someone who's fair when you restore rights, if that still exists at the time. You've got to be someone that's hiring the right people to run these agencies so that Floridians are protected. Right. All right, so, so now we're in campaign mode. We're, we're five days away from being in full campaign mode. Right. God, God willing, right? Um, <coughs> and, but, but as you look at the campaign, how is Representative Sean Shaw going to connect with the Florida voters? Are you just going to start at one end and work your way to the other and just keep taking laps or, or or how do you get out there? I mean, clearly Florida is really three states, right? right. North, North, Central, and South. You've just got to, you know, you know, you got to get around. I was right. born in North Florida, raised in North Florida. I represent Central Florida, so I think we'll have some good inroads there. But this is a this is a race that's going to require you to raise significant resources. Yeah. So a lot of my time is going to be spent doing that. But look, my background is, you know, all my life I've been a consumer advocate. I was the insurance consumer advocate for two years, uh, the kind of law I practice, all I do is represent little people against big people. Mm -hmm. My time in the legislature, I think I, I put my voting record against anyone, and I'm just gonna tell people that's how we're, that's what this office is about to me. It is the, it is the ultimate consumer protection office right. for Floridians, and we're gonna run an authentic campaign. This is gonna be a campaign that you're gonna, I'm gonna let it all hang out. This is what Sean's about. Right. This wait, is, these wait, are my what? philosophical that's so unlike priorities. You. That's unlike <laughs> you. I mean, you're, you're just, you're so guarded in general. But so people uh, are sick. Of tired of talking points and sound bites and poll driven politicians and in this cycle where we've got all this energy on both sides not just the Democrats but the Republicans right. as well listen I'm gonna run it and when I look in the mirror the next day after the campaign right. either way it turns out I'm gonna be proud of how I ran it because it's gonna be authentic okay okay so 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 actually let's let's stay on the campaign for one mm -hmm. last question so there's there's three four can't five maybe five today candidates on the right. other side of the fence um, how do you see your message or who you are your campaign being different than, than what any one of those candidates is going to put out there? Well, I, this is one's easy. I believe we ought to ban assault rifles. No one on the other side believes that. I right. believe we ought to have some gun controls in response to the pass, uh, the Parkland massacre. I'm not sure anyone on the other side believes that. I believe we ought to sue pharmaceutical companies. I'm not sure anyone on the other side believes that. We're going to have uh, there's going to be a choice mm -hmm. between myself and the Republican candidate, and there's going to be huge policy differences. Right. I mean, right. massive. You're going to get to choose between 
uh, someone like me who wants to make the office super active, who wants to go after big time actors. I mean, whether that's utilities, whether that's sugar, well, I mean, big time people is who I want to go after, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, and you're going to go after, I think, some people who would think that we should continue in the lane we're going, that mm -hmm. Attorney General Bondi's done a good job, we ought to continue that. Okay. I'm going to give you a choice, someone who does not believe that we should continue in that right. road, you're going to get to make that choice. All right, well, final question along that, back in kind of in both worlds, right? So how do you protect against bad actors, but as Attorney General, still foster a good business climate in the state of Florida? Because, you know, the, the, <coughs> the balance is there. I mean, you know, so, so how, do you, how do you do that? Good businesses hate other businesses that are fraudsters. Mm -hmm. That's a really simple answer. Mm -hmm. Anyone that's doing the right thing wants me to take care of these bad actors. I'm not going after the good actors. Right. I'm not, you're doing right by Floridians. You'll never hear from me. Right. It's only the ones that are taking advantage. It's only the ones that are committing fraud that I'm going to go after. And you clean that up. It's a good business climate for everyone. Right. Everyone wants stability. Everyone wants to work under the same set of rules. And when everyone's working on the same, same set of rules, that's when it thrives. I'm not going after people that I have no reason to go after. Okay, all right, so, so, so it's gonna be busy. You're, you're, you're wrapping up a legislative session, that's, that's bu busy enough. You're about to jump into the campaign mode. When you're not doing all of that, plus running your business, plus, right. plus doing that, how does Representative Shaw relax? Now, we've had you on the program multiple right. times. We know you stream a few shows, but, but, but what do you do other than that just to take your mind off it all? Well, so I was born in North Florida and raised here in Tallahassee mm -hmm. on a lake, mm -hmm. and so I do a lot of fishing. That's what I do when I'm able to. So fishing is one of those things that relaxes me. I haven't caught a fish this entire session. It's right. probably why I'm all wound up, but I love to just be on the boat. Uh, it's something that is just innately re relaxing. Well, anyone who's been fishing with me knows that they're in luck because I'm not going to catch any fish in the lake. Well, that's fishing and so, there's catching. So we should go. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, Representative Shaw, thank you so much for joining Fi TV today. Good luck in your campaign. I'm sure we'll hear more from you as the campaign season progresses. And uh, until then, uh, thanks for coming on right. by. I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. Thank right. you. That's all the time we have for today's Fi TV. Thanks for tuning in. But before you go, make sure you hit us up on our Facebook page and our Twitter feed at FL Internet TV. Thanks for tuning in and for now, have a great day.